thank you so much, everyone, for, for joining me on this platform this evening. Now, my purpose of coming here or having this show, which you all know, is to introduce us to people on idea that will be able to help us on how we can execute on each and every idea that we have within us. So my name is Ed Murphy. And uh, whatever you're watching us from this evening or whatever you're joining us from, if you have the possibility to share this message and this platform to other people that could be benefit from it, I will kindly recommend you do so. Tonight, I have an incredible woman with me in the house. <laughs> Honestly, it's a... Uh, it's amazing, and uh, I don't even know how to address it. I'm, I'm, I'm about excited to, to have this incredible lady here with me. I have a uh, Dr. Omolola Omoteshio in the house. It's my it's, pleasure to be here with you. It's and a pleasure. I'm all the way from New Jersey in the USA. It's a pleasure to have you. You know, I, you are a kind of person who really don't need so much introduction. But before I say one or two words about you, I want to first appreciate your personality. I have seen so much of your work and your efforts. And most importantly, the way you advocate for widows, honestly, almost brought tears out of me. You know, I happen to be privileged to so watch uh, the conversation you, you had with uh, Stella Damascus some time ago, which actually really took something out of me. I said, man, wow, you know, I could actually see the reason and the motive why you do what you do. You know, it's really kind of amazing. I really, really appreciate your efforts and your contribution to, to my kind. So, but let me quickly say one of few things about you for most people who are coming across you for the first time. Dr. Omolola is a world-class transformational strategist. He is the mind that creates Sumai through the spoken word and uh, in the writing. She's a public relationship consultant. She is a publishing consultant, a professional broadcast journalist. She published over 10 books in which include Living Proof, Divine Connection, Finding Love Through God, Just Sharing, and so many others. And some of this book, I think uh, you can get it from the CGN uh, platform or at the end of this program of today, probably she will tell us where we can find some of these uh, products. Amola is the executive director of CGN Publishing, which is also known as Cares Global Network. It's a pleasure to have you today, Dr. Molala. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. And how are you doing? I'm awesome. I'm awesome. It's so good. It's so good. It's so good to have you. It's so good to have you. Tell me a little about you. How did you become a publisher? And what makes you become an author? You've already said so much about me, so I really don't know what more you want me to say. <laughs> but um, I've always loved to write. I grew up as an introvert. Introverts are people who just internalize things and they don't really want to talk about themselves. So writing became my hiding place. So people would offend me. I would go and write somewhere. I wasn't talking much, but you know, I would do my writing. But I had parents that encouraged me. My mother encouraged me. My father was equally a very good writer and he encouraged me. Getting into high school, Federal Government College, Odogolu, I developed an interest in literature and I had, you know, teachers who really, really encouraged me and I began to win prizes. And as far back as that time, I started a notebook, which I called Teenage Blunders. And I wrote poems, I wrote different things. And people would actually come to my boarding uh, house uh, corner. You know, we had these corners in boarding houses and they would come and read. It was like a magazine in a notebook form and it did not leave my corner. You couldn't take it out of my corner. You had to come to my corner to read, you know, and people would sign and all that. And guess what? I kept this book till 2001 when I published my first magazine. Wow. In fact, some of the stories in the magazine came from Teenage Blunders and the magazine was named Willow's Magazine. And so it continued from there. I continued to develop it until 2000 and 
2009, when I published my first book titled Dear JB. Dear JB is about John Brown. John Brown is an abolitionist, you know, who was part of ending slavery. So I got children to write letters to him. I said, okay, what if he was alive? What if you wanted to tell him something? What would you say to him? So their letters were compiled into Dear JB. From then on, we went on to start CGN Books. CGN Books is a company where we publish books. It's actually affiliated to Cares Global Network, but this is the publishing ham, and I'm the publishing consultant for that company. So in a nutshell, that's my story of book writing. Wow, wow. Definitely amazing. Incredible. It's, uh, <laughs> honestly, it's nice. It's an interesting journey. <laughs> it is, it is, it is. Okay, let's, can, can anybody write a book? The answer is yes. The answer is yes, because there are two kinds of book writing. You can actually do the writing yourself and you can hire somebody to do it for you, which is called ghost writing. So yes, everybody can write a book, whether you can speak grammar, you can write, you cannot write because somebody can actually do it in your place. So the answer is a resounding yes, everybody can. What you need is an intention to write a book and an idea you want to put forward to people. Uh, one of the books that's become very successful is The Audacity of Hope by Barack Obama. He owns the idea. He may have penned down some of the work, but what got out that it was actually ghost written. You see, so when you have an idea and you have helped quite a number of pastors to ghost write, you know, their ideas, some didn't even want to write a book. And I said to them, you do a lot in ministry. You should be able to like, you know, put yourself out there as an author. I can help you. So yes, everyone who is interested in becoming an author can auto a book, but to physically write it, you need some skills. <laughs> 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 you know, actually, there are, you know, there are most people who who actually have the idea to write a book. They but the thing uh, they probably have a story that would like to break forth to the world or something that would like to share. But being in fact, like most of them would think, like, uh, uh, I don't have the writing skills. I I cannot write. And sometimes uh, when you read when when you read most book, they might quite intimidating. I might not be able no. to put <laughs> words like these great authors or maybe people will not like my my book, like some of these books out there. You know, what's what will you what do you have to tell te to these kind of people who might have an idea of what to write but don't know how to go about it. Okay. There's so many parts of writing a book and there's so many genres of books. There were fiction, there were nonfiction, there were autobiographies, there were romance. People don't like all books. The world is filled with billions of people. So you don't expect that everybody would like just one. There are spiritual books, there are uh, do DIY, do it yourself books. Yeah. So if you want to write, you need to know who, that's the first thing. Who do I want to write to? or about. So you've got to answer the question of who. You cannot, it's uh, um, practically impossible to want to write for everybody. Some people speak broken English, some people, which we call pidgin English. Some people speak other languages, French. So as you're thinking of who, you have to think of what language do you want to write in? Do you want to write in French? Do you want to write in English? Do you want to write in Yoruba? Do you want to write in Igbo? You have to think of that. So who is going to be your audience? Who do you want to write for? Who do you want to write about? The question of who must be extensively answered. Then what do you want to write? Do you want to write about when you were in high school? Do you want to write about profession? Do you want to write about career? Do you want to write about cooking? You have to think of what. Then you have to think of uh, why do you want to write? Do you just want people to read for the fun of it? In which case, you can go and distribute your book all over the place. Just go on the street. Oh, here's my book. I give you it's free. Here's my book. You know, just for the fun of it. 
<laughs> you know, you have to think of that. Oh, I want to write for children and I want everybody to read it's comic. So I go and distribute it. I'm not asking for money, you know. So you have to think of why. If you want to make money, then it's a different story entirely. If you just want people to read, you can do it for your 40th birthday or your 45th birthday and just bring out a book and it can be about anything. It can be about your face. It can be about your nose, you know. <laughs> just write and give it out to people, you know. Then you have to answer the question of where. Where do you want this book to be read? If you want it to be read in a school, is it going to be a textbook? If you want it to be read in a church, is it going to be used as a series? You know, maybe by the pastor for Bible study and stuff like that. You have, to, is it going to be electronic? Now we have eBooks. Everything has now gone virtual. We're doing this virtually. Yeah, yeah, virtually. Maybe we have to plan it physically. I'd have to fly to Australia, or you have to fly to the US, or you both have to fly to Nigeria you know, the UK, but you see, here we are live doing this from our comfort zone, you know, and everybody all over the world can watch yeah, now yeah, yeah. or even watch later. So where is important? So we've talked about who, why, what, where, then when. This is why I fight with a lot of those who come to us. They give you a book, it's supposed to be for three months. After three months, they're saying, oh, chapter four is not yet ready. Oh, <laughs> chapter five is not yet ready. Oh, ah, I didn't know you'd be this fast. Deadlines. When? Do you need your book for a commemoration? You want to do your 40th and you want to book that day. There was somebody I gave an idea to do a book for a 60th. I didn't even know that he was going to pick up on it because I sent the idea through the wife. So I didn't even know. The next thing I checked my phone, like five or eight missed calls. What is happening? He wanted the book. <laughs> How are we going to do it? But we made it happen in six weeks deadlines when do you want your book so if it is just for fun do you want to use it to celebrate something do you want to use it to commemorate something do you want to use it to remember your mommy do you want to use it to remember when you got your papers you know when do you want the book to come out it is very very important that you respect deadlines and you honor deadlines especially if you're working with a publisher or a consultant now we're going to go to how how do you want this book to be done? Do you want it as a physical book? Do you want it as hard copy? Do you want it as soft copy? Do you want it as e-book? Do you want it to be uh, A4 size, profile size? You know, how has to be answered. Finally, this is what I call, this method I'm sharing is what I call Omalala's 5WHO. Many people know about the 5W and H, but I call it 5WHO, and the O is opportunity. What do you want people, what opportunity do you want to open up through your book? Is it just a book they will read and forget? Or a book they're going to learn from? Or a book that's going to better people's life? There is no title I've been involved in that was not written with the mind of helping people change. And that's why I call myself a transformational strategist. We need to change our perspectives, our worldview. If I'm speaking English the way I spoke it, you know, when I was five years old, you probably won't be listening right now. <laughs> <laughs> so what opportunities are we opening up to people through a book? People used to, used to say derogatively about Africans that if you want to hide something from them, put it in a book, which means yeah. because many don't read. But that is fast changing. Many people yeah. now read. The world is now open to us through books. So uh, when you're doing your book, what opportunities do you want to open people to? Do you want to talk about America? Do you want to talk about UK? Do you want to talk about your village? Because there's something you want people to get there. There's a village, for instance, in Nigeria where they have twins. Somebody can write about it. Ibuara. Somebody can write about that and say, hey, we don't know if it's the water or the food, but you want to go there. <laughs> you know? I'm opening people up to that opportunity. I can say to people, oh, my father is from Abel Kuta. There's a place there where when you go, people go there to pray. It's called Oluma Rock. I am opening people up to that opportunity. Yeah. So in a nutshell, that's on my last five W-H-O on book writing. <laughs> wow. wow, wow. This is incredible. <laughs> So now, what is the most difficult aspect in betting a book? Okay, the most, you're making me talk about what people pay me for. And the most, <laughs> are you going to pay me? Because this is cash master. This is something people 
pay me between $50 and $250 to just that, discuss with them. My so I hope, just, I hope that those who are listening <laughs> would really, really see this as being valuable and also reach us. You know, to just sign us up, up so that we can make Pepe. You know, anyway, <laughs> the most difficult aspect. I can say this, it, it will be different for different people. Yeah. For somebody who is very, who can write easily, it won't even be difficult to start. I know a woman of God who preaches with ease, but tell her to write a page. She can be on it for one, one month. Yeah. You have to police her, you have to call her, you have to do this. So it depends. Some people, it's the marketing aspect that's difficult. They've written a lot of books, but how do you sell it? Some people, it is the printing. They have finished the book to print. They cannot let the book go. Oh, oh, this one should have I. Oh, uh, no, 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 change that picture. I, I just snapped one <laughs> picture yesterday that is better than that one. You see, I always tell people a perfect book has never been written. The Bible is the most famous book. Everybody can, many people can agree on that, yeah. but it's not even perfect. It's not perfect. Yes, it's inspired word of God, but because human beings wrote it, some people will complain about grammar. Some people will complain about, oh, some people said the King James Version as thou, you know, fail yeah. it. Yeah. And all those, we don't speak that way today. So a no. perfect book has never been written. So different aspects will be challenging or difficult for different people. Some is the money, to bring out the money to be able to print. Some people is the quantity, you know, they want to print 1000, but they have no idea how they're going to distribute the 1000 copies. So different people is, will be uh, different things, different aspects of book writing will be difficult for different people. But you see, everything can be, uh, you can survive by hiring a publishing consultant. You can survive by hiring a publisher. You can survive by self-publishing. If you want to wait for a publishing company, for instance, to accept your book, they can have a long process that will be very discouraging. But today we have what is called self-publishing, which means you can wake up yesterday and in three weeks or four weeks, you can become a publisher because you can do all the aspects yourself. But what you know and what you've learned would determine how fast such a book will go wow wow this is this this is actually truly incredible you know we you you, you make mention about uh, making money you know when you want to write a book you should consider you're writing to make money or you just want to write to commemorate either your birthday or your marriage anniversary or whatever it is so let me quickly draw out my question from here Kim. Okay. Can can any, can you actually can somebody become rich by writing a book? Yes, it is possible. I I it's very possible, but some things need to have taken place. Are you known? Do people know you? Who are you? Because those who are going to buy from you, you must be known. So if you're not, if you're relatively unknown, it will be hard for your book to quickly make money. Also, if you hand over your book to a publisher, most publishers will take over the copyrights, right? They, maybe they are just paying you the royalty. You get my point? Those are technicalities of books. Like when people come to me and they say, give me a discount, give me a discount. As you're taking discounts, you're giving up some of your rights because book writing is not like meat in the market where the person can say, oh, okay, I bought it for 50,000. Okay, if I make 10,000 profit, it's okay. No, it's not like that. So if I say to you, you're paying this amount for this hour of work, I say, oh, why don't you reduce the money? The moment I'm reducing the money, your right in the work is reducing because the work does not reduce. The hours we're going to invest is not going to reduce. So some publishers actually take over your rights when they become the publisher of the work. And by so doing, all they're going to end up giving you is what is called royalty. That is a percentage from the sale of the book. With that, making money will depend on the volume you sell. So, but if, for instance, you're Bill Clinton, <laughs> you're Michelle Obama, you're Barack Obama, or the recently uh, 
elected, so to say, yeah. the president elect of US and you write a book. It can be an instant money maker. Or if you're doing what you're doing now and you're relatively known, as you said to me, maybe over a thousand people join, you know, this forum and you now write a book. Many people want to read because they've already learned from you. So if you're already popular in your sphere and you decide to write a book, yes, you can make money. Also, if you're unknown, but you're treating an issue that is pertinent, that is important, for instance, if you write about healing for COVID, oh, everybody wants to read it. <laughs> Even if they get to the last page and they realize that it was fake, <laughs> they would have bought the book because everybody needs healing for COVID right now. Yeah. Even those who don't have COVID, we all are eager to look for solution. When Dr. Stella broke out on, uh, on Twitter, many people wanted to hear what she had to say, you know, even though they did not know her, but because the issue she was treating was right, very, yeah. very pertinent to global discourse. So it depends. And some people have used this, you know, in a negative way. They would lie on their cover. By the time you get into the book, you will realize that it's empty. And this is so unfortunate. This may, they may make money instantly, but it could hurt them in the long run. So we have to think about both sides. So my answer to your question, can you make money writing books? Yes, but it is very, very challenging if you just start out as a writer and you're relatively unknown. Wow, wow. This, this, this is really amazing incredible you know i also think about uh you know when it comes to writing a book i have come across a lot of people who have started writing but along the line they they have to deal with so much procrastinations on the continuation so how do you deal with procrastination when it comes to writing a book i can't help you deal with your own procrastination i can deal with mine but i can give you the tips why do people procrastinate? They procrastinate yeah. because they believe that they would have more time tomorrow. Guess what? We all have 24 hours in a day. Whether you're rich or poor, whether you're tall or short or rubber or fat or slim, we all have 24 hours in a day. So whatever you leave undone today is waiting for you tomorrow. Yeah. So one way not to procrastinate is to do uh, go through what I said initially. Who, what, where, when, why, how, opportunities when do you need to do it pick a date and no matter what happens have step by step plan if you've given yourself first week say that week one i'm completing the entire book week two i'm going to work on layout week three i'm going to work on design week four i'm going to have it edited week five i'm going to send it to your publish you understand you need to know your timeline if you're going to work with a publisher, you need to know how much time they, they, they take. If, for instance, you want your book out December first week, if your publisher takes two months, you know that is not going to happen. Or you may have to look for another publisher who takes two weeks. Those who print for me, for instance, they take one week to print. Their, 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 their span previously was two weeks. But when I started working with them, I said to them, you have to be willing to do mine in one week. So for you not to procrastinate, you need to put some things in place and you need to be committed. The person I wrote a book for, for his uh, 60th birthday, you know, he was committed. I told him before we started, I said, come, we are attempting to do in six weeks what people do in six months but I can make it happen if you're going to work with me. And I said to him, you know, we need to be praying and fasting. And he said, I'm praying and fasting. <laughs> <laughs> Guess what? Books are attacked. For those who understand spirituality, anything you're going to write down that's going to change the life of somebody else is spiritually attacked. So let me put that in. So if your deadline, if you don't have room, like one week, you know, extra as your leeway, you may fail. You may procrastinate because eventualities can happen. You can have emergencies. Anything can come up. If you don't have that room, that extra room, that regal room, then you will not be able to meet deadline. This is really...
something that takes a full class to look at. You know, why do people procrastinate? They procrastinate for different reasons. You have a day suddenly and you're about finishing a book, you would have to, you know, just leave it. I had to, there was a time I needed to send something to court. I was almost finishing and I was just down, you know. I just had this um, ache in my eye and things. Immediately, I had to send it to somebody else and quickly call the person. This is what I still need to do. Quickly do it, send it to this person. And I quickly sent a message to that person. You're going to be receiving this. Help me to print it and send. I had to quickly change. So you have to be willing. You have to be flexible. And you have to have support. You need people to support what you're going to do. You're a married man. You have a wife. She has a need. She, she, she has things she's looking up to you for. And you have deadline and you didn't bring her into your deadline. She's going to scatter the home. <laughs> because when she needs you, she needs you. But if you have called her in and she's part of all this, then she can say, okay, my husband needs time to do this and support you. You need coffee, she's there to help you. You need this, she's there to help you. You need somebody to quickly help you type this or research this because book writing is a whole lot of things. There's a researching aspect, there's even the conceptualizing aspect, there's the layout design, there's what we call the front matter, the back, back matter. It's a whole lot of work. When we explain it to people, they don't even want to write. <laughs> so oftentimes we just, summarize for them so that they know that it is a lot of work but it is achievable thank you very much wow 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 honestly this is amazing you know you you've written a lot of books you know and let me quickly ask Jake, <laughs> how how do you feel when your first book was released elated excited it's like when you have a baby because You've been pregnant with this idea for so long and you are there just walking, walking, walking and one day you receive them right in you. Yes. In fact, at CGM Books, we always talk about books in, in light of birthing. Yeah. You know, we can birth your book. We can bring your book to life because really it's a creation and you can physically see it. And guess what? A book would always outlive the author. If God takes me tomorrow, my book can still be printed for years to come. And people who never met me can read me through the pages of a book. So yes, when your book is published, I mean, when I published for the man I talked about, instead of receiving the book, because I wanted him to have the full joy, <laughs> I actually shipped it down because normally I would receive such books and then send it to you or deliver to you during your lunch or at the event. But I just wanted him to have the full joy. So I had to ship it directly to him. And really, when he got it, it was so much joy. So yes, when you do publish your work and you say it, you are filled with a lot of excitement. And I always warn people. Some people immediately start looking for heroes. And then they get depressed when they see the hero. Remember, a perfect book has never been written. So take yourself out. Go for dinner. Be excited. Forget <laughs> about the errors in the book. You can always rewrite it in second edition or third edition or tenth edition. You know, for now, celebrate the fact that you started, you finished, and a book is born for the world to read. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> Honestly, actually, sometimes uh, I don't think uh, people do underestimate the power of books. Because oh, oh. Uh, yeah, when you look at my library here, I can see that. <laughs> you, know, you know, these are books of people who have long lived and gone. But today, they, they are, they, 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 what they documented is still changing people's life, you know. You know, like the first time I read uh, Take and Go Rich, you know, and Napoleon Hill says that uh, this book probably going to change going to be an impartation for the next generation and generation and generation. And actually, that's how it is. And today, that book is excelling crazily and it's still making an impact in the life of people. You know, sometimes uh, I kind of think uh, most people don't actually know the power of putting your story or your idea out there. You know, there was a time somebody was asking me, how will, uh, who is going to buy my book or who is going to read my book? If I write a book, so this is a person I realized, man, it, it, she have an incredible story. Mm. 
she have an incredible story that could aspire so many great mothers out there because what she has been through, a lot of women are still going through it. And any woman who get hold of these products could be liberated. And uh, during our conversation, you need to write a book because there are people out there who are waiting for your story to gain their freedom. And you never know how much impact putting your book out there can make on the planet. Actually, I think uh, people should actually consider it when you have an idea. You might not probably know how to write. That's the reason people like Dr. Mulala is out there. You don't really have to know how to write. You know, <laughs> you don't know how to, you know, you, you don't need the skills. If you don't have it, there's no problem. If you have it, that's cool. But if you don't have the skills on how to write, she just make we must make mention of something ghost writing yeah. and self publishing. So the stress should be saved. Talk to people like Dr. Omolala to help you put your story out there. Honestly yeah. speaking, honestly, you know, there is something so exponential about you, you know, both in your personality and including the CGN as well. You know, there are so many publishers out there, and uh, and there are so many publishing companies out there. You know, and so many book publishing consultants as well. What makes you different from every other one? Thank you very much. What we say in CGN Books is that we, we, we help you write your own story. We help you bring to life your own story, your own idea. How are we different? We work with our clients. We don't just yank the book off you and then bring it back. For instance, a woman I wanted to go straight for as far back as 2009, I asked her to send me a CDs, a salmon CDs. Why did I do that? I wanted to listen to how she thinks. I wanted to listen to her mind. If I wrote the book as my book, it will not sound as her. For instance, I don't see anything wrong in women wearing trousers. trousers. If she sees it as wrong, but I wrote the book based on what I see it as, and it is not a book, it is my book. So we go the extra mile to know your personality, to know how you think, to know how you speak, so we can speak as you. Many people don't bother doing that. So we actually study your person. Another thing we do is we do what is called conceptualization. We don't just bring out a book. Because we call it the birthing process, we actually go through a detailed process to conceptualize what color, what does color mean, for instance? We don't just splash a color on the book. A, a, a recent book done this year, Selling Skills, you know, by uh, Amoho, uh, uh, Mr. Amoho, or Pastor Amoho, as some call him, or Reverend Amoho, as some call him, we had to go through what is the color of business? What is the color of professionalism? And these were the things that, that helped us to decide the kind of cover we're going to have. So we look at all the details of book. And if we're your publishing consultant, we even go as far as even bankrolling some work. Like his own book, we bankroll the book. What do I mean by bankrolling it? We put in our money in exchange for being the one to do the book launch. In which case, we would have told you, you need to ensure that 500 people, 200 people attend, people who are able to put in this amount of money so that we can recover our money with interest. Many don't do that. If you want to retain your rights, we'll tell you what that entails. If you want to share your rights, we'll tell you what that entails. When you go to the site we use, which is www.writesyours, Y-O-S, meaning your own story, write Y-O-S dot webs, W-E-B-S dot com, you would find a lot of information that would help you. We also do something for our clients. We ask for an advance, but the advance is not just money for us to eat. The advance is to take you through the process of writing and publishing. Guess what? If after that uh, training, which you would pay for as your advance, you decide that you now want to hire us, the money becomes part of what you were supposed to pay. So we actually give you that amount off from what you're supposed to pay. If you decide that you, you want to work with somebody else, you've already learned 
the skills. So whoever you're going to work with is not going to toss you up and down because you have so many people who have zero idea about books. And when they go to somebody and the person says, I'm going to charge you, you know, 3.5 million naira or 10 million naira, they say, oh, that's too much. Why don't I pay 5 million? And the person will say, oh, okay, not a problem, 5 million. But guess what? You may have thrown away your rights to that book. And a lot of people receive contracts. We have a detailed contract that tell you, tells you everything about your book. Some people don't read it and they sign it. Guess what? Once it is signed, it is legally binding. Yeah. Whether it has gone through a law, court of law or not. So we let you, we explain to you the process, but trust some people, they don't read. And then when this issue of rights, rights, rights start flying, they will start <laughs> lamenting, they will start complaining. So I want to urge people, if you want to write, especially if you don't have the liquid cash, there's nothing, whoa. Hello, are you still there? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, okay, suddenly it disappeared from my screen. Okay, oh. I just stopped seeing it. <laughs> Can you see me? Yeah, very clear. Oh, okay. So if you can see me, let me just continue because it just disappeared from very my clear, very clear. Anyway, so for, for so we I, I want to urge you, if you don't have the money, nothing stops you from collaborating with a publisher and sharing your rights. Because you know what? If you don't have the money and you don't have the, uh, the, the, the skills to write and you decide that you want to own all your rights, your book will never be written. So why don't you partner with somebody who has the money, who has the skills for a portion of this work? I always say to people, a small portion of a small pie or a big portion of a small pie is actually nothing because it's a small pie anyway, but a small portion of a big pie could be everything. Yeah. So let's not be too focused on, oh, it is my right. Oh, it is my book. Oh, I want to own it alone. <laughs> oh, I want to. The main thing is you want your work to be published. Yeah. So focus on that. Write maybe a small book for you to test the waters and know the rudiments. Share the rights or give up the right for it to be published. Even if you have just a small royalty, by the time you've learned the rudiments, you can position yourself to do something big, in your own name, by your own self as a uh, self uh, uh, publisher. Wow, wow, amazing. This is quite amazing. You know, there was a, there was something um, I had Les Brown said one time, you know, that really, that really gave me some chills, you know. He said, you don't have to write your book because anybody's gonna read it, but you have to write a book because it is God given, given it to you that you should put it to the world, you know. Actually, I think this is what most people need. People think, who is going to read my book? You know, you should remember. Being the fact that you have these feelings within you, that you should share this idea. It is God-given. And I'm going, to, I'm going to speak to that. You know, I had an issue with one of our clients recently, you know, because of this particular thing. Some people want to wait for a big launch, you know, to make a lot of money. But the idea was given to you for the emancipation of souls. Yeah. It is to liberate somebody. And that's why I talked about the spirituality involved with writing. Many people don't understand this. When you want to write something that's going to liberate people, Satan or the devil or whatever name you call it, you know, or powers of diabolic powers will fight you. Many are focused too much on money that they don't release the work. They want the work, work to be perfect. They want to make sure that their millions will come to them. But guess what? While souls are waiting, God is going to deal with you. God is going to spank you because he has given you something that is supposed to liberate souls. So we shouldn't be too fixated. Imagine if the Bible was not written. Just imagine for a moment. If the Bible was not written. If it's not out there for us to learn from, just imagine. Or if, you know, the souls who were involved in writing decided, oh, we want to make money from this. Guess what? It was a king or a prince or whatever. Then King James was a king. He sponsored it. I don't know if the authors were paid, but he sponsored it for it to come out. Whether he did it for his own name to go around the world or whatever, but that book was written. So it is really a work of grace. 
We always think of ourselves, oh, I'm a publisher. The mind, who gave you the mind? <laughs> who gave you the mind to write? Who gave you the skills? How did you learn? Some people are very educated, but they're in psychiatric homes. Who gave you the sanity? Who gave you the presence of mind? Let me not start preaching. <laughs> <laughs> Let me not turn this into a sermon. But yes, I agree with you. And I agree with that quote that really, we have been given this to liberate people. Wow. Wow. Amazing. This is, this is really cool. Honestly, this is quite interesting for me and uh, for everyone who is uh, watching uh, right now and for those who will actually come across uh, this message maybe later in the time when they are very convenient to, 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 to watch it. You know, but I, wanna, I want to ask you maybe to quickly give because time has already fly. Actually, I'm sorry I'm taking much of your time here. You know, I want you to quickly advise some of the potential authors out there. So all potential authors out there who feel there is something in them they would like to share with the world, but they, they are still fighting with these uh, procrastinations on how to start, when to start, who is gonna read my book, who is gonna, how much am I gonna make from the book? You know, with all this confusion be juggled together, what kind of advice do you have for these people? Thank you very much. If you have an idea, yesterday was the best time to share it. Today is the next best time. You know why? You may not be here tomorrow to share that idea. Wow. A friend reached out to me recently that, oh, God laid it in our heart to write a book. And I was so excited. Almost immediately, you know, I started talking to her. And within two or three days, she returned to me to say, oh, my husband said, not yet time. And I couldn't say anything. When it's man, woman, matter. <laughs> I'm putting your mouth. <laughs> I, to get in trouble. I couldn't say anything. But if she were a stranger, what I would have said to her is, tell your husband God said I should write it now and get him to support you. Yeah. Because you see, a book is the only legacy. Building. Somebody can wake up one day and pull down a building. They can rezone you and you find out that you're no longer in Australia, you're in another country. <laughs> you know, things can happen. People die every day. But when you leave something in print, let that be your motivation not to wait. You can always improve on your work. You can start even with a 10 page ebook, a five page ebook. And then you continue. Some of my books were developed from sermons sermons of 30 minutes or 45 minutes and after the sermon i'm reading it again and god is ministering something else to me i'm reading it again and something is, god is ministering something else to me just as i was preparing for this i said to myself it's time for you to write a book on how to publish a book wow because i was preparing i didn't take this with levity that oh it's on zoom i'll just say anything no i prepared i prayed i got got ready for it and i was as i was developing this plan I may not even have said everything I planned to say, but guess what? It can come out in a book. Yeah. Because now I can sit down and, you know, look at it again, look at what we discussed, look at some of the questions. So if you have an idea to share, you may think you're the only one who wants to read. If you think you're the only one, call your children. Say, you're going to read this book when I finish. <laughs> <laughs> all your friends have written something I want you to yeah, read. To read you know? <laughs> a friend recently wrote an article and sent it to me and he said, read. And I'm like, are you going to pay me? <laughs> and then he started pleading with me. I said, okay, I'm going to read it. And I went to read it and I was able to review it for him. So there must be somebody around you who wants to read. Start with those around you. If a pastor starts with your parishioners, if your teacher starts with your students, if your you know a presenter starts with your audience, write something and have it printed or published. It can be one page, it can be ten pages. Once you see it and you can read it, it will help you on how to improve on it. I'll end with this. When I started as a presenter, my head was always like this. And they almost yanked me off on TV. You know, people were complaining. So my background was in paramilitary and spirituality. So my face was always strong. I wasn't smiling. <laughs> and I me off there because I wanted so much to be a presenter. I knew that I had the confidence 
I had to start learning. How did, did I learn? I would sit in front of a mirror. Now, I was a singer as well. So when you're singing, your head is all over the place. <laughs> when you're presenting, your head cannot be all over the place. So I had to learn. So if you want to become a writer or a publisher, learn the rudiments. Even if you're not going to do the work yourself, it will help you understand the process the publisher or the writer is going to go through. So learn. Whatever you want to do, you can learn to do it and you can learn to do it well. And if you don't give up, the day will come when somebody like Oprah can pick up on your book. I'm still waiting for that to happen. No, yeah. <laughs> to heaven is our next book or just sharing about Malala is our next book you know? or living proof is our next book. Wow. It can happen. Just believe. But you've got to start by first writing something. Wow. Honestly, thank you so much for this uh, revelation. You know, I really do think uh, people should, should understand, well, when God lays something in your mind, it is because it is needed by somebody else out there. And uh, when you keep withholding this back, you are actually depriving somebody else from being blessed with a message that God wants to pass across. You know, if if you have the idea to write a book, don't hold it back. The book is not is not actually for you. No. It no. is for someone out there who needs it. This is the reason why God is using you as an instrument to pass this message across. And you doing this give you the opportunity to end the title octo. You know. <laughs> Honestly, this is really, really, really quite amazing. Honestly, Dr. Molola, I really, really do appreciate your time and your efforts for honoring my invitation to, to be a blessing to as much as people that are going to come across uh, this, uh, this very message. But I want to quickly ask you something. What kind of impacts do you, or in legacy, do you want to leave behind after you've done your time here on it? Wow. Two things. I always say that I want to die empty, meaning that I want to offload everything God has blessed me with, and God has blessed me with a lot. 24 hours in a day is not enough for me. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so I want to make sure that I die empty, you know, release all the gifts and talents you know, that God has given me. And that is why we have a leadership school. We have a counseling academy. We have so many things we're doing. We have projects, we have programs, we have events, you know, and we have so many people supporting what we're doing. Secondly, another legacy I want to leave is the legacy of being a woman who created smiles in the lives of millions of people. I just love to see people smile. And how do we do that? We do that through counseling. We do that through what I call what I call mind healing. And it comes from speaking from forums like this. Believe it or not, this is a healing session for some people who may have stuffed their manuscript somewhere. A man was telling me how we tore and tore and tore manuscripts because he was just upset. It wasn't coming out well. <laughs> this is vibration for them. This is vibration for them. So I want to continue to create smiles. And when I've done my time here, I want to be remembered as the woman who created smiles in so many lives. So if you're struggling with your book and other publishers have told you we can't take your work, hey, contact me, let's talk. I want you to smile. Wow, wow, wow. This is incredible. Honestly, I can't thank you enough for these, uh, for these ideas and for this plan that you, you want to accomplish and that you are already doing. You know, you you be do, you you be doing so much. You be contributing so much, and the most importantly, when I see how much you you try to cons cons console and encourage most women out there who are voiceless, you know, to what they are going through personally. You know, we came from a culture whereby we've been there's a lot of a whole lot of oppression based on feminism or where you, who you are and where you're coming from. You know, and uh, people like you coming out to become a voice to people in this kind of categories or condition. Honestly, this is really, really amazing. I can't thank you enough for, for all you're doing. 
And uh, I pray that God is going to keep blessing you and giving you more strength to keep uh, doing whatever you, you're you doing out there. Thank you so As I always say to people, now God. Yeah. <laughs> by God. God always. It's not by my power. Now God. <laughs> that's, good. That's, that's That's interesting. That's interesting. So for most people who would like to reach out to you or to get in touch with you for consultation or for counseling, or for whatever reason it could be, where can they find you and how can they get in touch with you? Okay, I'll give you three addresses. One is www.writeyours, write W-R-I-T-E-Y-O-S. That's not a grammatical error. It actually means your own story. Write Y-O-S dot webs, W-E-B-S dot com. That is one address. Yeah. So if you, if you go to that address, there's a contact form. You can fill it. I would get it in due course. Another place you can go to is www.dc-homes, H-O-M-E-S, dc-homes, dot webs, W-E-B-S, dot com, slash, book, dash, council, book, dash, council. Also, there's a form there. If you fill it up, you know, it will get to me. And you can find me on uh, Facebook at Anne Muiwa, at A-N-N-E-M-U-Y-I-W-A. Wow. Thank you so much for, for your time. And then to everyone who would like to reach out to Dr. Amalala for counseling or for book a consultation on how to publish, where to start. If you are confused, you don't know how to, right? You don't even have to worry about it. Don't worry about writing a book. If you are, if you have inspiration and you feel that God lays something in your heart and you want to put across to the world, just reach out to Dr. Molala and ask him, Dr. Molala, I have a story that I want to share or I have an yeah. idea that I want to put across. How do I do it? So I think uh, to save your stress and save your time from overthinking and getting into procrastination process, just do this. Kindly reach out to Dr. Molala and um, she will respond to you as soon as she can be able to do that so that uh, your book can serve the purpose why God gave it to you. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us this evening. And thank you so much, Dr. Amolola, for this privilege to have this conversation with you. I really, really do cherish it from the bottom of my heart. I appreciate this opportunity. And I want to thank every one of you that have joined us this evening. I appreciate your time as well. And uh, if you feel this has been a blessing to you and uh, you want to be a blessing to other people as well, kindly share this uh, message. You are free to share to whichever platform that you think uh, is going to be useful. On. So God bless you for joining us this evening. And uh, I look forward to come across your way again on our next uh, event. Stay tuned and God bless you and have a good evening. Thank you so much, Dr. Mola, and have a good evening as well.